Right, well that attack pretty much did nothing. Oh no, that can't be good. No, 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 no. Hello, it's time for another Pokemon Sword Challenge video. This time due to popular request, I'm going to be taking on the game as Hop. Yeah, but what does that even mean? During the Pokemon Sword story, I face Hop 10 times, each where he uses a different team. So to play as Hop, after each of these battles, I'll be switching to using his latest team and movesets. Makes sense, right? Well, I'm also not going to be using any items in battle, including held items, to hopefully add a bit of difficulty to this challenge. Obviously, the goal of this challenge isn't can I, because we all know I can. Rather, what would happen if I did? So here we are. We begin the game by picking the name Hop 2, because we're Hop, but better. Now it's starter time and I make Hop choose Sobble by choosing Grookey myself before heading into the first battle. With the type advantage we have no problem taking down Hop and his team before heading into Wedgehurst and getting the ability to use Pokemon Home. Bringing in Sobble from Pokemon Home and catching myself a Wooloo we now have the best team in the game. No. Heading on to Route 2 we face Hop for a second time which again is no problem so we take him down easy. Leon gives an endorsement to both of his brothers and we can now add Rookidee to the team as Hop used it in the previous battle. Venturing onwards with the team free, I head into the Wedgehair shop and try my best to look as close to Hop as possible, but let's be honest, this looks nothing like him. Heading onwards to the wild area, we won't be needing to pick up a certain apple this time and then we head straight into Motostoke. A new town means a new clove shop and now we're looking more like Hop. Nope, it looks nothing like him. With the gym challenge starting, we obviously have to sign up with number 189 before heading over to the Budju Hotel to beat up some Team Yell grunts. After a good night's sleep, it's time to take on Hop for a third time, and in this battle, he still has the same team as me and it's actually at a higher level, so it's going to come down to who's the better trainer. Come on, it's me obviously. Beating Hop in another battle means we get some great new moves, right? No. Heading straight through Route 3, it's our first battle against Bead in the Mines, which I'm not even going to bother showing because we wiped the floor with him. Arriving in Turfield, it's time to take on the first gym, where we're going to need Rookidee to be the MVP if we're even going to stand a chance. My goal was to try avoiding Rookidee until at least the Elder Goss is sent out, so I start with Wooloo and deal a good chunk of damage with several hits. Sobo comes in to finish the job with two pounds, which leaves just the Elder Goss. Dynamaxing into three max airstreams takes it all the way down to red, allowing Rookidee to come in with a final peck to finish it off. This first gym ended up not being any trouble at all as we beat the Noseless Man and can now head onwards to the second gym, but not before another battle against the inferior version. Here he still has the same team, but this time with an evolved Sobble and Rookidee, and quite a few new moves. Hop has double kick so he has no excuse to lose, but somehow manages to throw it by using Growl and Defense Curls, allowing our Gulu to tackle its way to victory, ending on a critical hit. In comes our Sobble to fight his Cobra Squire and we still have barely any effective moves, so I just spam Water Gun to take it down while it wastes its time using Leer. Sobble has the level advantage, but these base form starters pretty much suck, so we take down Drizzile with a few pounds to win the battle. Thankfully that's the end of using these awful base form Pokemon and it's time to evolve Rookidee and Sobble and get some new moves. It's been so painful so far but finally we have more than just tackle. Heading into Hulbury we have a quick chat with this dude that refuses to wear trousers before we head down to the second ship. Wooloo is still pretty much useless to us so we send that in to deal pretty much no damage to Goldeen. Corvusquire actually has an attack stat that's worth something so two plucks take down the Goldeen. Pluck's actually pretty good and it allows us to take down the Aracuda also in a few hits. Corvus Squire has been pretty great but we have to use it as bait to waste a few turns with the Dreadnought's Dynamax. Our Drizzile is able to come in now with two Max Geysers to take out the Dreadnought and win us a second gym badge. Now we head straight to the third gym and oh, hey B, do you want another battle? And they're dead. Oh yeah, we have another battle against Marnie before I can take on the gym. So we start off with our best Pokemon, Wooloo, who destroys Krogunk with a double kick. See, just like... Oh. Corvus Squire is just better, and Pluck takes out the Krogunk. Drizzile is able to come in and take out the more Peko and Scraggy nice and easy to win the battle. Right, now it's time to take on the third gym. I send out Corvus Squire first to take the burn from Ninetales and go for some Plucks to deal as much damage as possible. With nine tails left on one quarter health, I play it safe and use Wooloo to finish the job. No, obviously not. Wooloo is dead. Don't worry though, Drizzile's able to come in with the water pulse to finish the job. 
Dynamax time and a Max Geyser makes short work of Arcanine taking it down in just one hit. G-Max Centiscorch is super slow so another Max Geyser finishes the battle no problem. Thankfully I actually have one decent Pokemon on my team. Now we out here in Hammerlock and it's time to get some new clothes to actually look like Hop. Nope, this is stupid, where does Hop buy his clothes from? With no gym leader here until later, it's straight through to Stone Side to battle against Hop again. This next team might actually be worse than the current one that we have, I can't believe this is what I'm going to have to use after. Cove Squire is up and I have nothing effective against Cramorant, so critical hit Pluck starts off with some good damage, allowing the second hit to finish it off next turn. Drizzile is no problem for Drizzile, and three turns we take it out. That HP does not look like no problem. Shut up! A Water Pulse destroys Scylla Cobra and leaves just Toxel left. Surely Wooloo can beat this useless Pokemon, right? It's really sad that Tackle is still the best move that we have for Wooloo, and after a Super Potion, we get KO'd. Are you kidding me? One more hit with a Pokemon of actual worth and we win the battle. Now it's time to upgrade, or honestly, downgrade the team. Grabbing the gift Toxel and catching Cramorant and Silicobra with a bit of training, it's now time to take on the fighting gym. Thankfully, I still have a flying move on Cramorant, so this gym isn't actually that much of a problem. Hitmontop is taken down with two hits from Pluck, and now it's time to go big mode and Max Airstream destroys Pangoro. Another Max Airstream does big damage onto Surfetched, but isn't able to Oko it, so we need a final move next turn. With just G-Max Machamp left, Pluck does okay damage before Cramorant is now very, very dead. A Water Pulse from Drizzile confuses Machamp, which is apparently a thing by the way, I had no idea. And after hurting itself in confusion, a final Water Pulse finishes it off. Hey, nice! That's four gyms down. Heading up the hill behind the gym, we stop Bead from smashing up a five-year-old's drawing and call the police. Nice. Making it to Disappointment Village, let's take on the gym. Oh hi Marnie, it's me Hop. You probably don't recognise me in the new clothes. Well that was just not funny. It's gym time. I start with Cramorant's dive and fish throwing combo, which is fairly effective, dealing half, and following up with a second takes out the wheezing. I have a missile armed and ready, so I keep Cramorant in against the Tokakiss. Pluck does pretty much nothing, but the airstrike takes Tokakiss to half, and using dive again finishes it off no problem. Moile is no trouble either as we yeet a Pikachu to finish it off. It's just Gigantamax Alchemy left and a dive does good damage and Pikachu is back to paralyse it. I was definitely not expecting Cramorant to do that much damage so Drizzile comes in with a Max Geyser to finish it and earn the 5th gym badge. Easy. Back in Homolock and well there's Hop. I guess it's time for another battle. His new team is actually pretty good so it'll be a good upgrade once we destroy him. Two plucks take out Trevenant, starting things strong. Hop sends out Bolt on second, so we actually get a use for Silicobra before never using it again. Inteleon is the third Pokemon out, so it's time for Toxel to actually do something before it also gets removed forever. A few hits from Nuzzle takes Inteleon to under half and paralyzes, allowing Cramorant to finish it off with a pluck. Drizzile spams Water Pulse onto Snorlax and gets a lucky critical hit to finish it off, leaving just Heatmore, who also gets completely destroyed. Now we have ourselves a big upgrade to the team. Ah, fun. This new team is actually really solid, so we shouldn't have any problems moving forward from here. I hope. We out here in Surchester, and now it's time to take on Fat Gordy. Thanks to this lovely comment on the last video, I was actually able to remember his name. Hey, speaking of which, if you haven't seen the last video, please go watch it after this, thank you. Alright, here's the sick gym battle. Double snipe shot starts off to take out the Barbarical, and then two more take out the Shuckle, and now it's Dynamax time. A Max Geyser takes down the Stone Journer, easy, leaving just Colossal, and what's gonna happen? Yeah, that's six gyms down. That was difficult. So I just spent ages getting this team ready with all the right moves just to have it switched 5 minutes later with another battle against Hop. Well look, it's going to be the return of Wooloo. Can I just keep the old team? Our Bolton starts off with a few crunches to take out the Dubwool and then I switch into Trevenant to fight Hop's Snorlax. I start with a Confuse Ray onto the Snorlax and then use Horn Leech to take it down after a couple of turns. With Corviknight sent out next, let's give Heatmore its 2 seconds of light. Two Fire Lashes onto the Corviknight, and yep, that's heat more done for this run. That was a lot of fun. I pretty much have to switch to Inteleon to fight his one, and starting with a Sucker Punch does some solid damage. I ain't here to waste your time, so there's like six turns of this, a portion later, and then we finally knock it out. I'm pretty much just messing around now. I need my boys to get a go before they're dumped in the box forever. This is so sad. Can we hit 17 likes? I hoped we could move on swiftly, but I actually just spent 40 minutes of my time searching for this. 
After mindlessly preparing the team and collecting for the last hour, I can now thankfully say this is the final one we needed. I hate everything and myself. All right, let's go to the seventh gym. Here, Here we, we go. go. But before we can head in, we have ourselves a battle against Marnie. Tanky boy Corviknight takes barely any damage from Sucker Punch and two drill pecks knock out the light part. More Peko is up and two double kicks take it down. That's four hits. Maths. The last two Pokemon are both fighting type, so let's use our type advantages. Yes. Drill Peck goes and does some things and we win this battle. Thanks, easy noobs. Now let's face Piers, but first he wants to play a song. Thanks for that, Piers. That was really nice. Okay, let's battle. Scrafty is Piers' first Pokemon sent out, and a few Drill Pecks have no problem taking it down. Our Pokemon has a gun now, so we shoot Malamar twice with Snipe Shot to KO it. Now it's time for our double to shine, maybe. Double Kick is actually four times effective, so here comes some big hits for... No. Don't worry, we have Snorlax, and he comes in and sits on the Obstagoon a few times to take it low. Pincurchin is up with a curse, and then a spark finishes it off. Barely. Skuntank is the last Pokemon and faces a barrage of drills, meeting a very brutal end. That's seven gym badges, one to go. My big bro comes to congratulate me on beating the gym before we head on to the eighth. I'm so sorry, Hop, but you've been replaced. I am just you, but better. It'd be great if this game had a bit more between some of these later gyms, but it doesn't, so here we are at the 8th gym. Starting the battle with Inteleon and Snorlax in the lead, first let's get rid of the Gigalith with a snipe shot and a heavy slam. Sandaconda is sent in and a Max Geyser takes it down in one hit, leaving just Flygon and Giraladon. I have no idea how I'm going to get through the Giraladon, so let's just deal with Flygon first, because that's how you deal with problems, by avoiding them. Okay, let's go for a Max Geyser and see how much damage it does. Oh, okay, well, that was easier than expected. Now that we have eight gym badges, let's head on to the Champions Cup. Victory Road. What's that? Never heard of it. We are now in Winden, the biggest city in Galar. Surely we can find some clubs that look like Hop. Nope, absolutely nothing. Well, that's pretty disappointing. So I decided to dress as Hop in an alternate timeline where he becomes the champion. Ha, <laughs> like that would ever happen. Idiot! Seriously though, this character pretty much looked nothing like Hop the entire playthrough, so I just kind of gave up. Like Hop did after losing to B during the story. Relevant and funny. Please subscribe. Okay, I'll stop now. Let's take on the league. I send out Corviknight and two drill pecks take out the Lipard easy while it wastes its time using Nasty Plot. Time to give Dubwool another shot and two double kicks take out the Morpeko easy and double didn't die for once. Another switch back to Corviknight and I pluck Scrafty to death in two hits. Another drill peck and Toxicroak is Okoed, which leaves just the Grim Snarl. We may as well use our Dynamax and two Max Geysers from Inteleon win us the first battle, no problem. Now for the battle everyone's been waiting for. Hop versus some very cool guy wearing glasses. Cue the best theme in Sword and Shield. We start this battle with Corviknight against Hop's Dubwool and spamming Drill Peck takes it low. Dubwool keeps attacking back with body slams which pretty much do nothing and after a full restore we eventually take it down. Hop next sends out his Pincurchin and I switch into Snorlax and use a crunch. Pincurchin attacks back with a poison jab which pretty much hits like a wet noodle so a few back and forth moves and we finally take it down. I wanted to set up this Snorlax vs Snorlax fight but we get destroyed by Hammer Arm pretty much straight away. It's Double's time to shine and even after being hit by two Hammer Arms it pulls through and takes it down with three double kicks. Two Pokemon left and I go for Dynamax with Inteleon vs his Corviknight and a Max Geyser destroys it in one hit leaving just his Inteleon. We tank a Max Quake like it's pretty much nothing and a Max Geyser deals half so we follow up with another one next turn to delete Hop from existence. We've now come further than Hop ever could, so I guess the end? Leaving the pitch, Leon is so proud of his younger brother in Cool Shades, and I have no idea who this is behind him. But what I do know for sure is he doesn't know his type advantages. <laughs> Funny. Let's just move on and we update to the latest Hop moveset, which by the way took me several hours to do as the majority of them were TRs from raid battles and they just didn't show up, but no problem, I'm very, very happy. We now have that bit with all the steel types that no one actually cares about, so let's head over to Rose Tower for a quick chat with Chairman Rose. Chairman Rose is a hard to reach guy, so we have to battle against Oleana before we can speak to him. The first Pokemon out is Frostlass and a Dark Pulse from Inteleon does the trick. Type advantages! 
Pincurchin is useless and even with the type advantage, Poison Jab does pretty much nothing and gets KO'd. Corviknight is not a disgrace and it finishes it with a drill peck. Snipeshot shoots the lasso and it dies. It would be nice if we had an electric type to fight the Melotic, but we don't. So instead I fat finger and press Max Geyser. Yes, that's definitely what I want us to do, that's very good. When I use the right move, we actually take out the Melotic. Barbador gets shot twice and is now very dead as we win the battle. Oh yeah, I had a question for Chairman Rose, but I've forgotten. Oh well, that was worth two hours of my time. Back to the League Challenge the next day and... Oh hey, it's Bead, I remember this guy. Starting the battle, I'm going to be one of those awful people that actually uses swagger. <laughs> Idiot, stop hitting yourself. You stupid. Now we go big metal bird mode and use free max steel spikes to take out Gardevoir and Rapid Ashen 2, leaving just the Hatterin. Getting shot twice, then sat on by double, Hatterin is taken out. Be bad. Next, we are up against Nessa, who sends out Galizapod and Emergency Exits. The Barrascuda is sent out next and we use Drill Peck to take it down in a few hits. Oh, it's Galissapod again. Considering this is the water leader, we use our electric type and actually do something for once. Pincurchin isn't dead somehow and another Thunderbolt takes out the Sea King. Pincurchin is apparently going to keep going and Pelipper gets destroyed by another Thunderbolt. I don't trust this new Pincurchin, so let's switch into Inteleon for the final Pokemon. Just Dreadnought is left and two Max Quake take no wait no three Max Quake take it down and we win the battle. Now for the third battle against B's fighting type team. It would be a shame if we had a very tanky flying type Pokemon to take on this. Oh. Hey, hey, that's not meant to happen. I'm meant to destroy you. We take Halucha down and do a bit of damage to Phalanx before being taken out. You don't need to worry about type advantages when you have a gun. How about a big gun? This is actually just way too easy. Another big water gun takes out the Graplocked, leaving just Machamp. Big Water Gun isn't enough to take out the Machamp, so we follow up with a Snipe Shot to finish it off and win the battle. Just Raihan is left now. You might be thinking that you beat me once already. Yeah I am. Now I'm going to beat you again. Inteleon starts off by striking a pose as we take out the Torko. Gudra pulls a Thunder out of nowhere so we obviously get knocked out, so here's Corviknight to finish it off with a Steel Wing. Our Snorlax has high horsepower so we switch into it and use two to take out the Turtonator. We have nothing left to fight the Flygon, so I switch into the Corviknight and spam Drill Peck several times to take it down, leaving just the Giraladon. Our Snorlax is equipped with high horsepower, so we go big. And we're done here. Alright, it's time to take on the champion. It would be a real shame if Chairman Rose just appeared out of nowhere and ruined every- oh. Off for a stroll into the woods, I find myself a rusty sword, which Hop for some reason thinks is going to be useful. Alright, Mr. Chairman. Please, can you stop blowing up stuff, or I'm going to have to give you the pointy end of tetanus. With Chairman Rose stabbed to death, we head to the roof and save the world from a giant space snake, and then call it a day. Obviously I'm joking, right? Let's take on the champion. We start the battle off by sending out Snorlax and using a super effective high horsepower. Hmm. A uh, super effective high horsepower. Right, yeah, we got it, second time. Snorlax gets taken out by Sacred Swords, so we send in Inteleon to use a mud shot. Oh my, stop. To use a mud shot. Yeah, we did it. Probably Dynamaxing a bit early, I go for a max hailstorm and use it onto Dragapult, almost taken out in one hit. But don't worry, we've got the hail to finish it off. Yeah, all as I planned. Haxorus is sent out and another max hailstorm takes it out, no problem. Our final max turn and we use a max geyser. Oh, it has water absorb. I need to save my Inteleon for fighting against Charizard, so I pull out an expendable dub wool. A body slam does some good damage and paralyzes it, which is probably more than I could have hoped for. Dub wool obviously serves its purpose, so we send in Corviknight to finish it off. We already managed to outspeed Dragapult, so switching back into Inteleon should outspeed the rest of the team, and we take down Cinderace in one hit, leaving just Gigantamax Charizard. A snipe shot deals over half HP and damage before Inteleon is taken out, so here's Pink Kirchin to finish this. We actually managed to survive a max rockfall which causes a sandstorm and a thunderbolt takes it low. And get this, the idiot knocks himself out with sandstorm for probably the most anticlimactic win ever. And with that, it looks like we are the champion of Galar going further than any hop ever could. No. We have more? After becoming the champion of Galar, I'm off for a walk in the woods and oh look, it's not the champion of Galar. Alright, let's get this battle over. A hammer arm from our Snorlax destroys Dubwool and then Hop sends in his Snorlax which we fill with bullets. My Pincurchin is clearly better than Hop's, but when Pincurchin actually faces a real Pokemon... Yeah, it's sad. 
High horsepower and dark pulse take out the Inteleon, and then two snipe shots take out Corviknight, leaving just Cramorant. Two drill pecks, and it looks like I'm still the best hop. Definitely not over an hour later, we now have some nice new moves and a team of six, and we now have a battle against celebrities that buy battles for twice what they're worth. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Overly dramatic montage, go! Nice! It's back to the story as we had no problem beating Mr. Sword, and obviously Hop loses to Mr. Shield, so it's time to go beat up some Dynamax Pokemon. And we're done! With the big Pokemon gone, we head back to the lab and oh hey, oh it's these guys again. And now it's time for a double battle. Let's be honest, when you're fighting against the Hop duo, you lose. We know our type advantages. And it's a win! No Hop, I won. Alright yeah, I will go and get the Dynamax Pokemon, but no one needs to see it because no one cares about this part of the game. It's boring. Bead still can't accept the fact that Hop has somehow become the champion and wants to be beaten up one more time. Just Hatterin is left, and Bead is pretty much useless as always as Free Steel Wings take it out and we win the battle. With all the Dynamax Pokemon gone, we head back to Hamelock to finish this. R2D2 opens the door for us where we find Mr. Sword and his cronies just chilling, down here. Alright, yep, uh, another battle. Okay, this could actually be a problem, I completely forgot to heal. Well, I guess HP doesn't matter then. Bisharp is up and... oh! This team isn't looking too healthy. Our pink urchin almost takes out Bisharp, but don't worry, we have double. Snipe shot is a very good move. Just a Galissapod is left and I might actually be able to win this somehow. Oh no, Inteleon's dead. It's, it's over guys, pack it up, we're done. Dubwool actually managed to do a thing and it looks like we win. I have no idea how that happened. I head straight to the roof and stand back guys, I have got this. Wait, you didn't want me to shoot it? Whoops. With Zish and gone, I'm gonna head back to the forest to beat Hop one last time. Level 65 and we are still using Double Kick. This is definitely fine. Being four levels lower than Hop's double, we managed to still come up with the W somehow. Or maybe I should say, the double U. Yes! Snorlax is up and both Pokemon smack each other with giant arms, where again, somehow we managed to come up on top barely with 12 HP left. Hop's team pretty much counters itself, but when you have Pokemon like Benkirchen on your team, you can't even guarantee that super effective moves will KO. I hate this Pokemon. Hop doesn't use a potion, allowing Cramorant to come in with the killing blow next turn. Even Snorlax can move faster than this completely useless Pokemon, which allows us to bring a high horsepower in to take it to yellow. I'm not even going to need Dubwool again, so we send it in for one final moment of glory. Oh, it survived. Let's try that again. Just die already! The Corviknight gets taken down by our secret 7th team member, leaving just Samazenta. With no effective moves, I just have to cross my fingers and chip away at it with Corviknight and Inteleon as I barely managed to get the win with a final snipe shot to finish it off. And with that, after 20 plus hours of playing everyone's second favourite brother, we beat Pokemon Sword. If you've watched this far, thank you so much and I'd love to hear what you think of this style of video down in the comments. As always, make sure to do all the things YouTubers tell you to do, like subscribe, like, yada yada, and I will see you all next time.